Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. Hey, we're back and we're talking about one of our favorite topics, which is the personality styles DISC. We gave you guys a lot of history. We gave you a lot of what it is and what it isn't, you know, how to use it, how you don't use it. Yesterday's show, make sure you listen to that because as we meander into today's topic, we're going to get into this, the specific building blocks of how to use this content. If you did not listen to yesterday's show, you're going to be at a tremendous disadvantage. And furthermore, even if you've been exposed to this, which most of you probably have, if you're older than probably 35, you may have even taken a personality test. I really think you should go back and listen to yesterday's show. You can listen to it after this one, obviously before this one would make more sense because then you can fully grasp how to make the information of this personality stuff practical and tactical. And you can see how, frankly, again, we talk about the history of it. We talk about what it is, what it isn't. But most importantly, what we talk to you about is how you can use it to put your, to better put yourself in a position to help other people and make money. That's right. So let's start with the driver personality style, which is direct and introverted. So direct, they speak pointedly with not very many words introverted they're not really the life of the crowd they kind of keep to themselves if you want a really uh fun test you've all heard the voicemail message from a driver here's what it sounds like beep they don't even leave a message some of them or they'll say you know the drill click well my voicemail if you guys so um yeah, i'll just do it anyway i uh, if you want to join EXP Realty, Julie and I would love to be your sponsors, all right? So you guys know we're at the EXP. We have an EXP Realty group. It's uh, We're sponsored by uh, all that. So if you're interested in joining EXP, just text me directly at 512-758-0206, 512-758-0206. Now, I did say text, and some of you won't text. You'll call, and you'll call, and the voicemail you're going to hear is, guess what? Please, uh, I don't check this voicemail. This voicemail is just here to tell you to do what I originally asked you to do and send me a text. text. And here's the phone number again, in case for some reason you yes. don't know what it is. Which is fairly wordy for a driver, but you're asking them to do something specific. Which I just did. So if you're interested in joining <laughs> EXP Realty, guys, do text us at 512-758-0206. So the driver is both direct and introverted. Often they are entrepreneurial, CEOs or managers, or other positions of authority. Not always, but often that's where they will be spending their lives. Now we're going to do how you win and how you lose this is specifically with a driver. So that assumes that you have assessed that you're probably dealing with a driver because you now have observed that they are direct and introverted. You win by showing up on time, by being direct, by being prepared and professional, by asking pointed questions to understand their needs, make your questions succinct and understandable, by showing how you will deliver results, by being factual and accurate and not full of fluff, Send bullet-pointed short emails. I guarantee you they don't get read if you write a novel for a, to a driver in your email. Especially if you're amiable and you're talking and use oh the goodness. word like feelings a lot. And you're trying to make it some, uh, some little, you know, some story. That's not, you're not, when you're trying to do business with somebody who you've identified using the notes from yesterday's show as a driver, if you get in some long-winded story about how your golden retriever, you know, stubbed his toe, I promise you that email will not get read. And it's not even that the driver doesn't care. It's just that they're not somebody that's going to sit there and read a long textual email or even worse, trying to put that in a chat. And just for the record, guys, it's not there. It's your problem that you're not being versatile that's right. to be uh, to relate to them. It's not their problem for not being versatile to want to read your long winded email. You guys get the difference. If you want to be the best version of yourself, not just as a real estate professional, but as a human, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be the person that is going to uh, be more versatile and you're going to modify your approach, not expect the world. It's like this current zeitgeist that's, um, yeah. frankly, it's amongst a lot of millennials. And you guys just hear me out before you think I'm picking on millennials because I'm not. 
but a lot of people are being have been raised to believe that the world spins around them, yes. their feelings, their thoughts. Oh, you just offended me. Oh, my passion is this. Oh, you can't say that. It's all around what your ego tells you that you, everyone has to comply to your ego. You can live that way, but you're going to find your world's going to get smaller and smaller until you're living sure. under the staircase. Yep. If you really want to have a wonderfully expansive life where you can not just deal with different types of people for the sake of selling, but just for the sake of connecting with other humans, which ultimately you're going to get the most fulfillment out of. I mean, when you're 122 and you're on your deathbed, I promise you, you're going to, with the things that if you read what people regret the most, it always has something to do with the lack of connecting with other humans. This mm -hmm. versatility aspect of what we're describing to you guys, helping you to understand, will profoundly change your life if you take away that one little pearl I just gave you. It's your job to be versatile for them, not their job to be versatile for you. Which means you really have to pay attention to who you're actually dealing with. Your clients are not all the same. Your friends are not all the same. So with drivers, send bullet pointed short emails, deliver on your promises. This is one of the things that a, a driver will break up with you, <laughs> uh, what, you know, professionally or otherwise, if you just don't follow through, you don't deliver on your promises. Um, so how do you win? You close for their business. Drivers do like to be closed. They actually appreciate you asking for their business and will think that it's weird and weak if you don't. If you have a crappy, sloppy, informal presentation, a driver, I, I know I'm stepping on some of your notes, Sorry. but a, a driver will maybe be polite, maybe acknowledge and play along. But if someone else comes along that's organized and is factual and is professional, you're toast. Now, you when you guys say that somebody ghosted you, it's it could be because you had a sloppy presentation to a driver and they just are not going to deal with you anymore. And the expressives, I'm talking to you guys. You guys are the ones that are most likely to walk in and win the business just off your personality, or at least that's what your ego tells you you're going to do. Assumptively. You're presenting to an analytical or you're presenting to a driver and you're walking in there being assumptive and not having a formal approach, not having a listing presentation, never having pre-qualified them, not actually taking their business seriously. And then you're followed by somebody who's less license number isn't even dry you know the ink isn't even dry in their license but they do have an organized approach that new agent's going to kick your ass and how do i know that's true because we have thousands of agents who join our coaching program on a routine basis who are kicking the butts of the agents who are seasoned veterans because they are treating the business like a business and having a more formal approach that they learn as being coaching clients of ours that's right and a more versatile approach so with a driver you lose by here, there are many reasons, but here are some of them. Showing up late or rescheduling, especially more than once. That shows that you're not taking the appointment seriously. Not being prepared so you seem to be winging it or taking their business for granted, what you just mentioned, Tim. Sending long text-heavy emails or lengthy voicemail. Not following through on what you said you'd do. Being assumptive versus factual. Looking unprofessional, too casual, or disheveled. That's not good. Not asking for their business at all or taking too long at your appointment, selling with blah, 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 instead of just blah. They want you to cut to the chase. That's actually a driver subconscious script that they use. Cut well, to the chase, get to the point. Right, well, they'll again, if they're not versatile drivers, they're gonna say that. What's the bottom line? Cut to the chase. Yeah. Like, can we just cut the, you know, can we just get to really what matters most? And if you're not versatile, and you don't know how to change your personality, uh, you know, change your personality and your approach to dealing with a driver, what's going to happen to you? You're going to feel like you just got hit in the head with a steamroller. That's right. And we're trying to save you from some of those painful experiences. I know I was trying to visualize what it'd be like for someone to pick up a steamroller and <laughs> use it as a bat, good. but it wouldn't work. And we are doing this fairly quickly because in coaching, you get the real drill down on this. We just are exposing you to the art and science to actually uh, apply this and you're appointments. And yesterday we showed you guys how to actually visually and even physically d determine what somebody is. So if, again, if you didn't listen to yesterday's show, go back and listen to it. But here's the visualization for you. You're, you're at some party, you're walking into a seller's house. It does not matter. You are coming across people, people that you do not know. How much more powerful and confident will you feel if you can instantaneously, almost subconsciously, because you've reached a level of competent, uh, 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 competence, competency, right? Yeah. Competency where you can instant, uh, what was the highest, the um, conscious competence, right? Yes, where right. you've reached the highest level of conscious competency and you're even, and you are able to ascertain what their, per now, how will you know how they communicate, what their job title is, what type of company that they're in, how they're dressing, how they approach you, how you see other people interacting with them, how they stand, how they stand in the room, 
what they're, if they're, if it's at some party where their spouses are there, what's the personality type of the spouse? Because generally speaking, you'll see people that are introverts, marry introverts and extroverts, marry extroverts. Even if one say, for example, a driver and the other is an analytical, because otherwise you're going to have every weekend where your analytical introverted type is going to want to stay at home and, you know, basically recoup from the weeks of a week of having to, you know, be more extrovert. Right. <laughs> and they're going to want to just take a breath and go on a walk in the woods where the extroverted person's going to want to go, 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 Let's go. party. Right. And that's yeah. going to, generally speaking, that's going to create a okay. little bit of a, a turf battle about, you know, who's going to win the war of the weekend, which means that that's not going to be necessarily a great, uh, a great recipe for a long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. So you can, once you understand the building blocks of this stuff, and then you understand a little bit about the people you're interacting with, figure out what their personality style is. And if you're an amiable person and you're running across somebody his, okay, you found out this person, the lady's an accountant, right? And the husband's a doctor, I, you know, and, and you, you can pretty much without, uh, with virtually no fear of being wrong, assume that they're both introverted, Absolutely. right? So if you're an amiable person who is uh, generally speaking less direct, you're going to do good with these people. And you're also then going to want to not necessarily spend so much time talking about emotions and whatnot. You're going to want to be a little bit more factual, mm -hmm. a little bit more reserved than you normally would be. Um, and a little bit like, for example, an amiable person. And again, we're, I'm jumping ahead, but I want you to start realizing the power of this. An analytical person, generally speaking, is going to dress more formally, is going to dress more, I don't know, the word I was about to say was precisely. More crisp. Right, more crisp. They're not going to look like bohemians, right? They're going to look more like Absolutely they're... Absolutely not. Right, and a driver the same way. And, and if you guys really want to have some fun with this, you can, when you're showing houses to people and you're taking them through, you know, if you've not yet learned how to be a listing agent, which means you haven't become one of our coaching clients yet, but when you're showing real estate to people and you take them into... Uh, different neighborhoods, it, you will oftentimes see the buyers will start looking for signs of people that are similar to them. Now, how are they going to, now without seeing the people, the neighbors, they're going to just look at the yards. Yep. If you're dealing with an amiable and they're seeing lots of kids stuff everywhere. And playgrounds. And, and playgrounds. And, blight, and neighborhoods are, are generally speaking dominated by certain personality types. Mm -hmm. And you'll, and you'll see an amiable rolls into a neighborhood of another amiable where there's obviously a lot of amiables living there. Yep. That person's going to instantly feel more comfortable. Now, if you take a driver to a neighborhood where everything looks a little disheveled and there's kid plastics, I'm trying to avoid saying the word crap, but if there's kid stuff everywhere, <laughs> such a driver if, thing if, if it, well, but if it's a big mess everywhere oh, and it's disheveled and you know, it just looks a little bit like uh, there's a little bit lack of order there, your analyticals and your drivers probably aren't going to like that neighborhood as much yeah. as if you take them to them a place where things were a little bit more formal and tidy and whole communities are designed around this drivers in, um, analyticals, for example, they like HOAs. They like things that are orderly. Tidy. They like tidy. They like you guys. Symmetry. Get, right. I, I was laughing because I think about our neighborhood in Dorado where there's like eight or nine different neighborhoods in the same community. And there's like a very, very, very kid community. Yeah. And then there's some very not kid communities. And they do have different feels, even though they're a 10 minute golf cart ride away from each other. You know, it's interesting. The kid community, you know, you've got little kid Crocs all over the place. Yeah. You're talking about Dorado Beach East. Yeah. Right. And then you go over to, to uh, Dorado uh, oh, like West Beach or, or West Beach. And then it's it's essentially like you're walking to a sterile operating Like room. you don't even know anybody lives there. <laughs> <They're> just, <laughs> it's exactly. hilarious. And they all kind of walk around like they're in some sort of, uh, you know, they, they wear, they're just think of this, More how formal. they dress. Yes, absolutely. You'll never see anybody wearing Crocs living in West Beach. No, can't happen. It's impossible. <laughs> But I do remember um, showing many buyers that would say that would specifically request neighborhoods where all of the backyards abut each other. Yeah. You know, so that they can just send their kids out to play with other kids without crossing the street. You know, these things are important to people. And the thing is, this is why you have scripts. This is why you ask questions so that you can drill down and know who your client is. So you're draw you're pulling into the driveway of a house tomorrow and you listened to the podcast series. We started before this one on how to become a listing agent, right? You've signed up for our coaching program. You are actually knowing what to do, how to do it. You're pre-qualified. You've got sent the pre-listing pack. You know, they've read it. You've got the listing presentation. We actually tell you how to approach the seller, not just the seller themselves physically, but the house Mm -hmm. When you do step by step, depending on what you know your personality style to be and what you know or suspect their personality style to be, your very approach and how you present 
is going to be altered dependent on who you are, but who you are trying to appeal to them. Based on your observations and your questions and your answers and things of those nature. And by the way, I mentioned coaching. Here's the thing. The pre-listing package that we teach you guys is very DISC friendly. That's the reason we tell you guys not to change it. That's right. It's very well thought out. The scripts and the coaching and the things that we drill down on in coaching that make you a more powerful, more versatile agent there is a lot of detail to this. Well, look at our pre-listing pack. You mentioned mm-hmm. it, right? Mm-hmm. So there's, again, guys, the, our content, when you become one of our coaching clients, you look at it. And if you're over time, you'll come to appreciate it even more. Have you guys ever like watched, a, have you ever watched a movie that you haven't seen uh, uh, for 10 years? And then all of a sudden you're like watching it for the first time, even though you thought you remembered it, you realize mm-hmm. there was a complete subtext or many subtexts that you didn't even realize was going on. That's what happens as you get educated. And also as you get a little older, hopefully you get wiser, though those two things don't necessarily go hand in hand. But when you look at our pre-listing pack, what you're going to realize is we have pages to Julie's point that are designed specifically for amiables. One of the pages for God's sake is called giving back. That's right. And the testimonials because of all of your potential clients. And remember about 60% of the world is amiable. They will call your recommended testimonials. If you give the phone numbers and the email addresses, because they do want to do research and make sure that you're going to take care of them. And in the pre-listing pack, there's other things, the communications guarantee, there's the easy exit listing. There's the the flexible fee commission plan. But what some of you guys do, coaching clients don't do this, is you get our content and then you say, this isn't like me. I'm going to make it like me and use words that are like me and I'm going to modify it. You've modified it to the point where you've nullified the reason it was designed and the words were chosen that they were chosen. Because the versatility built into the pre-listing pack is designed to overcome what we assume is going to be your lack of versatility. We originally designed the pre-listing pack and a whole, a whole listing process because, and I know this is a nice problem to have and I'm, you know, this is what happened. Julie and I were going on so many listing appointments. Sometimes we were going on two and three a day. And we are proactively generators and we are going on lots of listing appointments. And it got to the point where it just got annoying. I mean, it just did. And, and so we had to, and from we From a had, logistical standpoint. No, I mean, from overall, I was, I didn't I want. I just don't want to sound ungrateful that we're annoyed by all the business. It was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. Right. But it all came from the fact that our system worked. So yes. we ended up having to hire. And so we were getting centers of influence and in past clients. We were mm-hmm. getting new clients. We we're getting all this types of business that was coming in. Julie and I were very religious, uh, proactive lead generators as we teach you guys to do. Well, we would have business that would come in occasionally that might be a referral from, you know, an agent or something like that. And we would we don't want to push a listing appointment off for more than like two days, more than two days. You're probably not going to take it because the yep. seller's going to think, well, you're just too disorganized or too busy to actually take my business seriously. And they're going to hire somebody else. So we had to hire someone to go on listing appointments for us. So we hired Lisa. Lisa was a nice gal. She did not have a lot of sales experience. She had a great personality and she was expressive. But what she was most of all is she was willing to learn how to be more versatile. So what Julie and I then had to do is we had to create the pre-listing pack and we created many different generations of it so that when she went on listing appointments, it got to the point where her ratio of taking the listings was almost as good as ours. Because she had learned versatility and the ability to present to different types of people the way they wanted to be presented. She was essentially filling a role. It wasn't dependent on her personality. It was dependent on her using the system that we had created for her. And that same system, actually many, many different uh, iterations and evolutions of that system is what you guys have as a coaching client. If you want to stop wasting time trying to figure it out on your own, which is what the professional amongst you will want to do, go to timandjulieharris.com, click on coaching and just join guys. Just join Premier Coaching. That is the perfect entryway into our coaching program. Everybody can afford it. It's designed to be uh, something that everyone can afford. Just go to timandjulieharris.com, click on coaching and sign up for Premier. It's very simple. That's right. We're trying to take some of the pain away for you. So, all right, back to our personality styles. The influencer or expressive, this is the I type personality who is direct like the driver, but in this case, extroverted. Okay, so that's the difference. They are direct, but they are extroverted. Typically, the expressive is a life of the party type. They know everybody. Name they're droppers. Name droppers. They're super social. They're very relationship oriented. They're party organizers. These are fantastic people to have in your center of influence list because they know everyone. Especially if you're an introvert. Especially if you're an introvert. These, these are like, you want to keep them happy. Hang out with them. All right, so they tend to be, where did that go? Tend to be aspirational and they tend to move a lot. 
This is also great client, real estate clients. And they're going to want to, they're going to figure out, want to figure out who you know, yes. because they want to know based on your friends, if you're like them or not. So you're going to have to be more versatile when you identify that you're dealing with an expressive. But the main thing with expressives is you got to, and Julie, I, re, I don't want to step on any of your points, okay. it, but you let them dominate. Do yes. not try to dominate an expressive. <laughs> That's the first point under how you win with expressives by letting them be more dominant, especially if you too are expressive. There's nothing worse than two expressives competing with each other. It's like some kind of bird feather fight or something. I don't know. <laughs> so don't try to overly dominate uh, you win by being fun and responsive to them. If you're somebody who is typically more analytical, like me, quite frankly, and, and doesn't always have that much expression in my voice, if I'm talking to an expressive client, even a coaching client, I'm going to have more uh, ups and downs in my voice, more energy, more enthusiasm. Be fun and be responsive to them. You also win by knowing what they most desire and delivering on it. Often this is t uh, to be in the same neighborhood as their friends or their colleagues or the parents of kids where they're, their kids they're hang very out. They're very expressive, to Julie's point earlier, are very status-seeking. Yes, typically. And they're status-seeking through where they live, what they drive, the clothes they wear. Colors, the, for sure. The jewelry, jewelry that they wear, men's watches, you know, things like that. They're going to do things... An expressive is going to do things. I mean, the old way we used to explain this is imagine a cheerleader, but I'm not sure if that's even, you know, but it, it's yeah. somebody who's going to do things that intentionally try to draw attention to themselves. That is an expressive. That's right. Then they like a lot of color, stuff like that. And on a side note, Tim, I've been meaning to mention this to you. I read an article in Travel and Leisure that was about flight attendants and how they interviewed five or six different flight attendants about how they decide who to bump up on a flight. So there's two versions of that. Who, if you're on a wait list, you know, you're on standby, who gets let in? And also if there's availability in first class to be bumped up from coach to first class. And they all said something really interesting. We get into this in the Harris Rules book about upgrading everything. They all said that how you dress when you travel matters. And they said that they consciously or subconsciously, and some of them were very direct about this. They will say, if you look like you made an effort to travel and show up on our plane today, I'm way more likely to bump you up to first class. I, and one of them even said, if you are wearing flip-flops, you're going nowhere. You're riding, you're riding back. You're with riding the, in coach if you even get past standby. You're riding in the back with the, the yaks and the, other, the and, the, and the other cattle. Yeah, but I thought, isn't that interesting that they were pretty clear about that and how you come off definitely matters. But that's, you know, that goes to, again, this is a whole chapter in our book, Harris Rules. Yep. If you've not read the book yet or have not listened to the book, it's available on Amazon. It's available at every major bookseller. I always, I mean, it's five, almost 500, maybe even over 500 uh, five-star reviews. It's one of the best-selling real estate books at all time. A huge chapter is about upgrade everything. Read the book, Harris Rules, Become a Coaching Client. It's the next natural progression to where you are right now in your business and your personal life. Yes. Yeah, so back to how you win with expressive compliment, compliment, compliment. They love attention. Also, accept their gifts with praise and enthusiasm. They're definitely givers. And don't assume that they will write down or remember important things in the transaction or the process confirm a lot and ask them to put it in their calendar. You expect to tell them something more than once. Showing more than telling. Showing them is more um, impactful than just telling them something. Now, how do you lose with an expressive? Well, again, trying to be more dominant or and or being too quiet or aloof. Assuming they read your long email or remembered your long voicemail, you lose by trying to sell them something they can't afford. This is a big uh, thing with expressives. This will make them embarrassed, disappointed, etc. So if they cannot go up a hundred grand in today's market, don't try and talk them into it. Well, it's be not strategic good. too, just to give you guys some advanced training. If you're dealing with more expensive, uh, uh, you know, clients, know what their pay cycles are. So mm -hmm. by expensive, I mean maybe people that are in Wall Street or people that are in the entertainment industry or things like that. I had a, a coaching client. He's the number one agent in Reno, and he would he had a very famous actor as a client. I'm trying to remember his name. He's an Avenger, mm -hmm. the actor. Oh, you remember yeah. who I'm talking about? He was he I was ja he was yet. Jason Bourne one time too, only once. Anyway, whatever his name yeah. was, some of you guys are shouting his name out and Sorry. being frustrated that we don't remember <laughs> his name. But you guys know who I'm talking about. Yeah. He's been he was a kid actor. Long mm -hmm. story short, um, he would not he would go to Reno uh, and buy real estate 
when he had a movie contract signed. Makes sense. And, and he was he was working movie. He was signing contracts and committing himself to years out. But he wouldn't buy when he wasn't making money. Right. Everybody's like that. People will purchase when they're feeling optimistic about the future. So you have to be sensitive to what the pay cycles are. Know what the cycles of the industry are that you're of the person you're dealing with. You know, not everyone's getting a consistent paycheck every single month. Some people have big ups and downs in their incomes. Mm -hmm. You guys do. That's right. So how else do you lose with expressives? Well, being negative. Expressives are social and upwardly mobile types who like to have fun and share in group experiences. So don't come off negative. Being too analytical. Typically, expressives are not spreadsheet types. So next, we have the amiable personality, otherwise known as supportive, who is indirect and extroverted. Again, more than 60% of the population falls into this category, indirect and extroverted. Very family-oriented, involved in schools and community. They're the ones with the Band-Aid when you need it, right? So, so we have to go through amiable and analytical? Yes. So, Okay, so let's hold these off for another show. Okay, you got it. Okay, so we got to get this show done so we it's can get It's a lot to digest. It's a them. lot to digest, right? I mean, people are hearing all this. So let's give them a homework assignment. Yes. If they haven't listened to yesterday's show, go back and listen Definitely. to yesterday's show. Um, we do have a website. It's called agentdisc.com, agentdisc.com. Uh, you know, so you can go there and take a free personality assessment, but the number one job that you have between now and, um, the next podcast, where we're going to finish off this topic and then give you guys a quiz. Yes, there'll be a quiz tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So let's remember to give them a quiz. Yes. Cause I'm a, you know, not the type that will have written it down. <laughs> you're supposed, you're supposed to Note cover to self. Note to I got self, it. Yeah. Um, is that you should be giving us a, and this is me being direct mm -hmm. five star review yes. on iTunes with a comment. And if you're listening to the video on uh, YouTube, please subscribe to our channel and also give us a great comment. We certainly appreciate the position that you guys put us in as being uh, being in tune with our life purpose, which is being of service to all of you. All of your life purposes, the place where you're going to find the greatest levels of success and happiness is when you're of service to other people. And that's going to be your real estate clients primarily. Because remember, guys, your this real estate business is the greatest blessing. You are in the right place at the right time. There's been no better time to be uh, on planet Earth. You know, there's no been, been better, no better career, no better industry, no better everything. You're in the right place at the right time. Embrace this opportunity that you have in front of you by understanding how to become more versatile. So go back and listen to today's show and yesterday's show. And we certainly appreciate and, you know, guys, honestly, it's an honor to be your at the very least, your podcast hosts, and at the very most, your real estate coaches. We certainly appreciate that opportunity. Many of you are ready to join our coaching program. Just go over to timandjulieharris.com, click on coaching, and then you can join. Uh, most of you will want to start out by joining in Premier Coaching. Very affordable, very simple to join. It's the next natural step for all of you. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you on the show tomorrow. Hello, thank you for having watched this video. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right. And don't forget to hit that like button, leave your comments and questions below, and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're going to love that one.